move on to activity three. Activity three is quite involved. This is where we're going to create queries or questions of the database and present the information to the users based on the criteria that we set out in our query. In order to create a query, we click on the create option and then choose the query design. This will open up a dialog box showing the tables that are available. We're going to select the tables that we need in this instance. And in this instance, we want to choose the customer table. And we're going to choose the customer type table. Notice that the diagram is showing the links between the tables and showing the relationships between them. So from here, we can either click on the tables themselves and double click on the fields within them, or we can choose from the field options down at the bottom, what table and what field we want. You'll find it a lot easier just double clicking on the fields inside the tables displayed as we are doing at the moment. We need to make sure that the customer type is also set to some of the criteria that's been asked for in the exam paper. We need to show regular or new customers. So in the criteria section, simply type in regular or new using inverted commas to denote the twist that we want. As you can see that when we run that query, it does show the regular or new customers but in the criteria for the exam paper, it only asks us to show certain information. So we're going to untick the show option for our query for new and regular. The criteria is asking us to sort the customers by ascending order. Choose the sort option and drop this down and you should be able to then choose ascending. Once we've done that, click on save and then make sure we're using the correct naming conventions by putting qry underscore new and regular customers. Next, we can move on to the second query that we have to create in our exam paper. In this query, we are asked to create a query that would allow a user to enter a parameter value for the ticket type when run. It's going to need to have calculations that display the number of tickets unsold and the potential income from unsold tickets. So in order for us to do this, we're going to need to select the ticket type table and the ticket sales table. As you can see from the query, we're going to select the ticket type the ticket number, the cost. We're going to look into a new area called a parameter query. A parameter query allows a user to input a value of their choice. So in order for us to do this, we need to go inside of the criteria section within the query. All we need to do is put a square bracket, enter a message to the user to please enter a ticket type, and then I'm going to make it easier for the user as well. I'm going to give the examples of the ticket types that they can use. So Friday, Saturday, and the last option that we want is camping. And once we've finished that message, we need to make sure we've got the close bracket, the close square bracket at the end. Now, when we run this query, what should happen is a message box should pop up and ask the user to please enter a ticket type using either Saturday, Friday, Saturday and camping. I'm also going to add the customer ID here and I'm going to set another criteria value and I want to make it that it is null. So what this is going to do is it's going to look through all of the records and where there is no value or no customer ID associated with a ticket it's going to show us the values in there. So as you can see from the example at the moment, I'm entering Friday and it's going to display me all of the tickets and the ticket numbers that are available for a Friday. So we'll run it again. And this time we're going to enter in another option, which is Saturday. 
and you can see that we've got ticket numbers 1006 and 1007 and finally we're going to run it again and just use the camping and see what the options are for that and we can see that we've got ticket 1010 So just to make sure that everything is correct and right, we can see here that in our ticket sales tables that we've got the tickets that have no customer ID attached to them and we can see that we've got the right ticket type linked to them as well. Now we're going to go back into the query design and we're going to just turn off the show option. We don't need to see the customer ID as it's asked us not to show that information inside of our query. So just to make sure that it's not being displayed, we're going to go back and run it again, set the value to be Saturday, and see that, yes, this value is no longer displayed. We're now going to click on the total option inside of our ribbon, and you'll notice we have a row that says total. If we click on the drop-down box, you'll notice there are a number of options. We want to choose the option for count, and that will count the number of tickets in that column. And then on the next box, we need to choose the sum, which will calculate the values in that column also. So if we now go and run that query again, and this time we enter Friday and click OK, we should see that, yes, it has one ticket and a £39. We're now going to move into the report side of our question and in our report question we're going to need to construct and compile a query. We're going to go into our query design and we're going to choose the following tables, ticket sales and ticket type. In these tables we are going to select the following information, the ticket type, the ticket cost, the ticket number and the customer ID. But this time we're going to click on the totals option inside the query design. This will provide us with an additional row of information that we can play around with, where it says total. We're going to choose the drop down box under customer ID and put the value of where from the options. And in here we're going to type the value is not null. This is going to look for values that are available inside the table and only show the ones where there is a value against them. Then we're going to choose the option for count underneath the, the ticket number and we're going to run it. And as you can see we have our ticket types, the costs and the number of tickets sold. You need to make sure that you've deselected the show option on the customer ID. We're then going to click on save and we're going to give it, give it the name qry underscore discount 3%. Now that we've created our query, we're going to go on to create our report. Click on the create option and choose report wizard. From the dollar box, we're going to need to choose the query that we've just created, which is our discount of 3%. Select all of the available fields and bring them over into the selected field option. In here on the next window, we're going to choose what we want to group our level by, and we're going to use the ticket type. Click next as you go through the wizard and then change the orientation to portrait. At this point we're going to make sure we give our report an appropriate name and we're going to change it to RPT discount 3% and then modify the report's design as an option selected. This takes us into the design view of our report and as you can see that there are a series of pieces of information laid out inside of our report. As part of your requirements in your exam you are asked to make sure that your report is laid out appropriately so click inside of the header and make sure that your title reflects the, the query so as you can see here we've put in the information of report and we're going to remove the underscore give a space and then put to show discount of three percent Next we're going to preview it and as you can see there that's a little bit better in terms of our layout. 
As you can see, we've got all of our information that we've got in our query displayed quite nicely, and we're going to move back into the design view. This time around, however, we want to add some more text elements. We can do so by adding an existing field, such as cost, and you can drag that into the detail area. Notice that we have a label and we have a text box. You can cut the label out and paste it inside of the header so that it is with the other headers inside of the actual report. And as you'll notice, you can drag them around individually by simply selecting on them and then moving them around with the cursor. I'm going to expand this text box so that we can enter in a value or a formula. And in this, we're going to use very similar concepts to what's in Excel. We're going to put an equal sign, then we're going to use a curly bracket and a square bracket. The square bracket is going to get the value from ticket cost over here, and it's going to look for the information from or that is contained within those cells. So we're going to then multiply the cost of the ticket against the count of number of tickets. So all we need to do is put in the times sign, again putting the square brackets, and we're going to type in count of ticket underscore number as it is displayed in the cell beside it. I close that square bracket and then close the curly bracket. In order for us to check that this is working properly, we're just going to go to the view and we should see that yes, actually the cost of the ticket, £88 times 2, is £176. Next we're going to move on to the next option that we were asked to do, which is to show the potential discount that is applied to or can be applied to the tickets. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply copy the text box that we've just put in and paste it beside the original one, dragging it over again as we did with the first one and putting it beside the actual text box over here. Again with the heading I'm going to do the same and I'm just going to make sure that they marry up so that they are above each other. I'm going to change the title of this text box to be the potential discount. And I'm just going to drag it over so that it's inside of the field of view. And I'm going to make the ticket costs a little bit smaller so that we can squeeze in our new text box. If we go inside this text box, we're going to need to change the formula that's inside it. So what we're doing is we're going to leave the values that are in there, but this time we're going to add another value of timesing it by 0.03. Make the field a bit smaller again so that it fits within our field of view. And we're going to file and we're going to view and see what the discount is. So we can see here that the potential discount of 3% applied to a ticket cost of £176 will be £5.28. Now we're going to copy this text box again and we're going to paste it and we're going to move it to the end and this time we're going to apply the total discount to those sales. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put the heading into uh, discounted ticket sales but, and this time we're going to go to the very end where we've got that calculation of 0 0.03 and we're going to change it, we're going to invert it to be 0.97. And we're going to change the text inside of our heading area to be discount. Discounted ticket sale. Sales. Press enter. And then we're going to go to the view. And we're going to see 
that actually the value after the potential discount is applied is correct. So from £176, a discount of £5.28 pence will equal £170.72. Click on the design view and then just do the last few pieces of visual touch-ups, making sure that we've got no underscores inside of our headings. These are easy points to be lost inside of your exam, so make sure it is well worth going over and just updating the headings or the titles that you have so that they're obviously representative of what is being displayed. So as you can see here, I'm putting in the total number or number of tickets sold. I'm going to then take out the underscores inside of the other areas and I'm also going to make it that it is easily readable to any user. Click on view and we should be able to see that we have a very nice looking report here that meets the criteria. Finally, in this part of your task, you're asked to save your database report, not as a screenshot, but as a PDF. You can do that by clicking on the PDF option and choose the name that is appropriate and save it or publish it into your area in order for you to be able to attach it to your database file ready for sending once you've completed your exam. The system will ask you if you want to export the steps that you followed. Don't worry about this, click OK and then you're finished.